Are you serious? Testing one, two, three. What? Are you serious? Okay, that, that doesn't look as good as I like. Okay. Um, it says perfect streaming. I just don't like it. Okay, guys. I'm going to go in there. Let's get this thing started. What? Let's get this thing started. Let's get it started. I don't have a monitor for some reason. I don't know why. But my monitor's out in here. But as long as, but that's okay. I don't have to have it to do the show. Just, it's just nice to know. But that's all right. We'll deal with it. Are you serious? Uh, are you serious or are you delirious? Oh, I didn't turn the thing. Did I? No. Give me a second. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> what are you doing, Paul? Don't be delirious. Are you serious? Don't be delirious. How come I feel like I'm delirious sometimes? Because I'm, because I'm forgetful what I'm doing? What's going on here? Are you guys serious? All right, welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley. I think I got it together now. I got to show you this can of beans. I want to thank you, Squirrel, uh, Michael, and Erica. Michael and Erica. There it is, guys. This may be the design that we use for the uh, heavenly roasted, the Begley, the Begley coffee beans. Uh, it'll be ground. We're going to do it ground, though. Okay, we're going to do it ground. But are you serious? Heavenly roasted. Heavenly roasted. Uh, it's robust blend of coffee. Ground. To put pep in your step and a godly desire on fire. Orig uh, are you serious? And next time, and then the, the, it's either we got the heavenly roasted, and of course, rapture roast is coming soon. What? No, we're going to have those ready. We're working on getting our uh, coffee brand uh, branded there and brought forward. And we just want to thank Erica and Michael for designing this can of, be of uh, coffee and actually giving it to us while we were in Oceanside, California. And I've been, I've been, we've been working on it, but I keep leaving it upstairs and I haven't been able to show you guys what it was that Erica and Michael did. And that really is cool. Erica gave it to me. She really designed this and we really are thankful. So is she out there right now? If she is, no, there she is. Yes, that's there. Okay, there she is, 88 Squirrel. I'm so sorry, Erica. I've been, when you gave it to me uh, a little over a week ago, I guess, I, uh, I just loved it. We put it in our luggage, brought it home, and I thank you for the card as well. And Heidi's been working on this. We actually, uh, she's been, we've been working on this, and we loved your design, okay? We loved your design. So we'll be talking to you about that, okay? This is really, really nice, folks. There we go. This is really, really nice. Heavenly Roasted! What? What? So I'm going to give a high five to 88 Squirrel out there uh, as Erica and Michael. Really thankful these guys went the extra effort. But they didn't realize it. I don't think she realized that we were in the process of... Sorry about that. To... Uh, People have been begging us for at least five years. Uh, for at least five years, people have been begging me to create, come forward with our own brand of coffee. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm also going to be bringing forward a coloring book very soon for the children. With uh, yeah, that's right. I know I'm a superhero in that. Well, there's several. Okay, it's and it's all about Jesus Christ and bringing people to the cross, but it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. The man that created it uh, down in Florida 
give us all the designs. He's the one that actually illustrated it all. And, uh, and it's so it'd be a coloring book. It's, 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 it's really, really cool. The kids will love it. It's biblically based. Yes, Pastor Paul is in there kind of as a action figure, whatever. But it is going to be a lot of fun. And yet the kids can learn about Jesus and learn about the, the cross of Calvary and all of that. So that's cool. That'll be coming up soon. But anyway, the, the, the coffee is really neat. And I really want to thank Squirrel for that. Well, Robo Mom's in the house. Is everybody doing all right? I missed you guys today. I really did. I was, but Heidi did such a great job, didn't she? I mean, she took on the big issues. She took on the big issues with the uh, porn star um, uh, diaries. But while how she brought that whole thing together with the abortion portion and, and, the, and the Blackburn and the sex trade industry and everything else that was going on in the world. I thought it was just an excellent program. She really did great. And I was in Indianapolis and I uh, did four complete television shows and they went great. I mean, even the producer even told me they was probably one of the four best I ever did. And they're, they're all teaching from the Word of God um, 30 minutes each, four of them, and those will be airing starting April 1st, April 8th, April 15th, and April 22nd. So you'll see those. But anyway, let's get right into this, guys. We've got so much to do here. i got so much to do. And I'm a little lost because I don't have my monitor working. So I'm really a little bit lost. The, the, the cord came unplugged, and I couldn't figure out where in the broadcaster to plug it in. I didn't know which one to plug it in. So I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I just got to get used to not being able to see what's happening. Anyway, let's go right into the word of the Lord. Let's bring Max in right now. Where'd Max go? Where is Max? Do we lose Max? Uh, maybe Heidi put it somewhere else. I don't see him. I want to pull that one up. Okay, hang on. Sorry about that. I usually just have him right over here set. But we've got a heavenly palace. Now they're changing the, now they're, they're zeroing in on the time, but the location, Rome. What? Rome. So it's no, the number one spot, the most high probability now has moved from lower Michigan to Rome. Chicago is still also high on the list, along with Barcelona, Spain, uh, Istanbul, Turkey. But Rome, right now, the city of Rome is the highest potential for deep impact from the heavenly palace falling from the sky. Uh, you got to be kidding me. I mean, I mean, what are the odds of that? Well, we're going we're gonna to see where this all shakes out. But uh, let's go right now. Let's get Max in here right now because we need, we need to hear something from the word of the Lord uh, to, just to inspire us on what's going on. And we're going to let him read from Genesis chapter 3. Max? King James Version of the Bible. Max? Max? Chapter 3. No, now the that, serpent was more no, crafty no, no, than no, no, any no, no. Wait, of the wait, wait, wild wait, wait, animals. Wait, 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 that's the wrong one. But that's not Max. What's going on here, guys? You guys are... that. Max is upset. Where's Max? Whoa. Max? Genesis 3. That's better. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. What? And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and 
gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Yeah, who told you, Adam? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, A serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothed them, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also the tree of life, and eat, and live for ever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden, cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. This was a costly, costly mistake. It was a, it's, this is what sin brings. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's the wages of sin, and that's what happens when we disobey the word of the Lord. And everybody's blaming everybody else. Adam's blaming Eve. Eve's blaming the serpent. The serpent says, I know. And uh, God has to put a penalty on everybody. And so it's just, uh, it's, it's a sad story. And, and we are faced, and we inherited that sin. But we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We've been set free from the curse of the law. We've been set free from the curse of sin. In other words, it is time to reverse the curse. And that's what I'll be preaching on from Genesis to Revelation come Sunday morning at the Hear the Watchman Conference down in Dallas, Texas. And if you're also coming there to be baptized, please come on Sunday morning. And Sunday morning is free. You don't have to pay for the whole conference. If you're coming for the Sunday morning worship that I'm speaking at, the Sunday morning session is free and 
You can also be baptized. It's all free. Okay, so that's really good. And I really thank Mike, uh, Mike Kerr and Jeannie for uh, doing that. Okay, that just it just proves that um, you know. Look, uh, look, you have to have funds to run a conference like that to bring in eighteen speakers and, and all of that, obviously. But at the end of the day, their heart's in the right place, and that is to win people to Jesus Christ to bless the saints, to equip the saints, to make a difference in everyone's lives that come there. People truly invest a lot of time and effort to come to a, a conference like that with uh, great speakers being brought in from all across the country. As a matter of fact, around the world. You got uh, Messianic Rabbi Zeb Parat comes in even from Israel to speak. But it is going to be a, a great weekend, and uh, I'd love to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you in Dallas, for those of you down there, all right? All right, and we've already heard from a bunch of you that you're coming, so praise God. All right, guys, this is insane, but the heavenly palace that's falling, free falling. It's not just Facebook that's free, free falling. It's not just Facebook that's free falling in the stock market right now because they've been selling all of your uh, all of your information without compens compensation to you that's yeah, that is that's messed up but the heavenly palace the hopi prophecy and and here's the really wild thing for for last week that the number one place that this thing was supposed to hit was southern michigan well now they have said the number one place it's going to crash at this moment now their calculations is Rome. What? No way. No way. But it's not just Rome. Miss CD, be careful. Chicago is also on the list. And, um, and so is Barcelona, Spain. And so is Istanbul, Turkey. All right. Uh, so number one is Rome. Number two is Barcelona. Number three, Chicago. Number four, Istanbul. Those are the top four uh, cities that this palace could hit. Now, obviously, it could hit in a field, a mountain. It could hit in the ocean. And they've now said that the uh, instead of April 3rd, they're saying now anywhere between March 30th and April 6th, uh, the date they're looking at is still the highest probability date is still April 3rd. But the location now is Rome as the highest probability. But that doesn't mean that's where it's going to hit. Uh, that's just insane. That is crazy. Um, um, just it's crazy. Okay. We're going to keep a close eye on this thing. I'll tell you more about that. I've got the information for you on this. Before we, but before we get there, let me tell you what's going on with the earthquakes. We, uh, we are having earthquakes. We've had 24 in the last 24 hours, uh, give me just one second here. To uh, we just had a 4.7 in Bolivia. Mexico's rocking. Also, we've had a 2.6 in, in Alaska, 2.9 in California in the geysers. Okay, we've had a 4.3 in Fiji, a 2.5 in Oklahoma, 5.2 earthquake. Very shallow, only 13.8 kilometers. This quake hit Taiwan. We had a 3.2 in Haines Junction, Canada, a 2.8 in Alaska, a 4.6 in the Philippines, a 2.9 in California, a 4.6 in Indonesia, a 4.9 earthquake in Argentina, 4.0 Papua New Guinea, 2.6 Townsend, Washington State. What? 4.4 uh, Nicaragua. 4.4 Argentina. 4.9 Mexico. 5.2 Mexico. And 4.3 Mexico. And uh, so Mexico is shaken. 4.4 China, 3.1 Fairview, Oklahoma, 
4.8 Indonesia, 4.0 El Salvador, 2.7 Alaska, and a 4.7 just hit Bolivia. So the earth is shaking and quaking. The devil's back is breaking. My mind is aching. Folks, we're not faking. I wish Heidi would scramble some bacon, eggs and bacon. Oh, even my calf muscles are aching. What? Uh, what, what are you people taking? I mean, this is a serious situation here. And uh, it seems like nobody's taking it serious. The, the earth is definitely in the birthing pains of the end times. We're in the last days. And the Bible said that in the last days that these dangerous times will come. And so what we're looking at, what we're watching, what's taking place um, is, is, is nothing more than the realization that the absolute, uh, uh, it's not a speculation, it's a realization. There's a manifestation from the book of Revelation that we are in an... <laughs> A serious situation. Can you say amen? Do you feel the inspiration of this? I mean, are you serious? It, it, we're in the last days. And so we're going to keep a close eye on what's going on around the world uh, with the earthquakes. Now, let me just tell you quickly, solar winds are blowing on the surface of the sun. All right. There's no question about that. And matter of fact, Dutch Sense is joining me with this conversation of the heavy pressure that because of the solar winds blowing through that gaping hole on the sun's atmosphere that he anticipates a 7.0 or higher earthquake within the next 24 hours or so we're going to watch closely now the, the good news is the winds are dying down a little they're at 410 kilometers per second right now but NOAA Forecasters say there's a 55% chance of a G1 geomagnetic storm on uh, March 22nd, a couple days from now, when the solar wind currently blowing around the Earth expected to intensify. Arctic auroras are likely on the first nights of the northern spring, okay? And uh, so keep an eye on that. Definitely keep an eye on that. Um, uh, magnetic cracks and storms. For the past five days, the Earth's magnetic field has been in a state of unrest as an unusually wide stream of solar wind blows around our planet. Literally, the geomagnetic field has been shaken back and forth. This plot from Stuart Green's backyard mega meter in Preston of the U United Kingdom showed the unrest uh, in our magnetic magnetic field okay it's from the solar winds that have been blowing so strong there was 45 fireballs in the last 24 hours it is incredible what's been breaking through the earth's atmosphere and as far as uh asteroids are concerned we're okay again today it's tomorrow we do have asteroid 2018 FG1 that is going to miss the Earth close at 4.5 lunar distance. All right. So uh, this, this is what's been taking place in the heavens. But oh, by the way, speaking of the heavens, another nor'easter. What? Another? You're, the East Coast is going to be hit with a fourth nor'easter. This is insanity. It's insane. It's insane. It's driving everybody insane. But, um, you know, time in New England takes me away for ugly nor'easters. They're all by the bay. Yes, the snow will be falling. I mean, folks, it seriously will be. It will be falling. There will be huge snow expecting 18 inches of snow in portions of the East Coast. This will be an ugly, ugly, ugly situation. We're going to keep a close eye on it because it is a ugly storm. We'll tell you more about it as we go on. And speaking of ugly storms, guys, are you serious? Did you see the grapefruit size hail that fell in Alabama last night? What? 
Unbelievable. And there were tornadoes out there too, okay? There was tornadoes, destroyed a church in Alabama, and hail falling. Now that makes you look right at the book of Revelation chapter 11 when it talks about great hail. But I literally saw the pictures of hailstones at the size of a grapefruit. This thing was almost the size of a mushmelon. I mean, it shattered windshields. It broke through one guy's uh, mailbox. It, it just destroyed windshields on cars, came through the hoods of a Jeep, crashed through people's homes. This was insane in Alabama. So um, I don't know if Anna from Alabama, I don't know if you were in on that or not, but there was a bunch of hail down there. It was like the apocalypse had come to Alabama. Uh, incredible. I mean, literally, folks, incredible hailstorm. Hailstorm of a biblical proportion uh, as grapefruit-sized hail crashes in Alabama, causing considerable damage. There's no doubt about that. Um, this Chinese space station, I'm going to read a little bit here. We've got an article on it. And then, yes, we've had another bombing in Austin, Texas. It happened tonight about an hour ago. We're going to get you some details on that. Things are getting uglier, folks, out here uh, all over the world, really. You're seeing apocalyptic events. You're seeing storms. You're seeing all kinds of different uh, strange weather conditions. Uh, yes, it snowed in parts of Kentucky today. Uh, it's, it's, the snow blizzard is expected in Pennsylvania. Uh, it's going to be just huge what's going to take place with this nor'easter and uh, along the East Coast. And, uh, and this is the first day of spring, isn't it, in some places? Is this the first day of spring? What are we doing having another nor'easter? The fourth nor'easter in a month, in 30 days. What? is going on what kind of uh uh is this geo engineered snowstorms or is this is this apocalyptic does anybody know what's going on here very strange to have this kind of extreme weather conditions taking place but that's exactly what's happening the heavenly palace is falling and uh reports are now this out of control Chinese space station known as the Heavenly Palace is also carrying cancer causing toxic space station full of toxic chemicals uh, is going to hit the earth. There's a number of major cities that are in the path and of course scientists are calculating as this thing goes around each, each uh, rotation, each orbit around the earth, it drops a little more and a little more. Eventually, it's going to hit our atmosphere. It's going to then come roaring down at enormous speeds. It will start to break apart. So I'm sure there will be pieces falling in a large path. And then they took a look at the path. Well, where is the path going? And the path is this, this Tiangong one will come crashing back to the earth somewhere between March 30th and April 6th, with April 3rd being the highest probability. Also, the cities that are highly uh, probable or possible, I should say, with the number one possibility of a city to be hit is Rome. All right, Rome, Italy. The, the, I mean, are you serious? Number two is Barcelona, Spain. Number three is Chicago, Illinois. Number four is Istanbul, Turkey. Also, Toronto's on the list. So is Beijing, China, and so is New York City. But um, uh, as this thing begins to fall, this is a doomed uh, uh, space station, the heavenly palace, the Chinese space station. It's been out of control since the late in the fall of 2016. It is headed toward the earth. It is containing dangerous, toxic chemicals. It is going to crash into the earth. Um, and scientists will only know the precise date it will impact exactly where the debris will fall during the final days of its decline. 
Guys, I don't think they can fully pinpoint this. I'll be honest with you. But explaining why this is uh, so important, folks, is because of the radiation on this, the toxic space radiation, the chemicals that are in, are in with this thing. And as it comes racing toward the earth, it will become a dangerous situation. If anybody happens to be in the path of it, it's not good at all, folks. Not good at all. Now, I'm just going to say that the people that are watching closely are saying that April 4th uh, is a strong possibility. April 3rd has a little higher probability of that being the day. They're already saying, though, it's between March 30th and April 6th. They're giving themselves that kind of a window. They're keeping a close eye on it. They know that this is. Uh, there's other cities that are also a little more distant potential. Would you like to know what they are? They are Boston, Massachusetts, Des Moines, Iowa, Detroit, Michigan, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Salt Lake City, Utah. But those are pretty low in the probability list. Also, Florence, Italy, uh, uh, Monaco City, Sochi, Russia, but those are also pretty low in the list as well. So the, the cities that are really, really, of, 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 and down in the southern hemisphere, of course, uh, there's always a possibility that New Zealand or Argentina or Japan could get hit, but those are very, very, very low probability. The, 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 really, what they're looking at right now is Rome as number one, Barcelona, Spain as number two, uh, Chicago, Illinois as number three, and Istanbul number four. But now let me just say something. It doesn't mean it's going to hit any of the cities. It could hit in the mountains. It could hit in the ocean. It, this is the highest probabilities of cities. Okay. They originally said the highest of all locations was southern Michigan. But that's changed now to uh, uh, a Rome, Italy. But we'll wait and see how this all pans out as we get closer. I just don't think, I mean, to me, this looks like a wild guess as far as I'm concerned because You've, you, you know, you don't, you're not exactly which day, so how in the world could you know what the location is? But they're going by uh, computer-generated uh, uh, analyzation, and um, they're going by that and highest of probabilities. I want to welcome all 1,151 of you that are joining us live at YouTube. Plus, we've got a lot of folks with us. Can I say hi to everybody? at Roku Satellite Television, everybody at New Livestream, thank you for being here. Also, Periscope, are you serious? And publiclyprophecy.com, as well as those of you watching uh, over uh, at uh, YouTube Live and the direct radio line. Those of you that are listening there, you dial the number 605-472-5791. That's 605-472-5791. Uh, we're going to keep a close eye. Speaking of Yellowstone, someone just mentioned, could it hit Yellowstone? Yellowstone's not on the list, but I'll say this. Yellowstone doesn't need to get hit with the space station. they got enough problems of their own as, the, as the, the, there's been small eruptions and some trembling and things going on there at Yellowstone at the super volcano that's not making people feel very comfortable either, to say the least. This is not a good situation. So we're going to watch that. Now, having said all this, folks, we, had a, we also had a shooting. Before I talk about Austin, Texas, we had a shooting today, again in another school, this one in Maryland. Uh, let's take a look at this situation. Um, let me find where it, where it went. Okay, Maryland school shooting, two students are injured, the gunman is dead. When the emotion, when the commotion about someone with a gun began Tuesday, Isaiah uh, Tenigner, an 18-year-old, stepped into the hallway of Great Mills High School to pull a stunt, his classroom's door, but instead found himself watching the climax of a school shooting. He said he saw a classmate with a gun to his own head as the school resource officer rounded a corner at the southern school. Tim Ignore ducked back inside the classroom as he heard shouting. Put the gun down, the officer yelled. We know 
you don't want to hurt anyone. The officer ordered the student to drop the gun again before two shots sounded, marking the end of the latest school shooting in the nation weary of them. The shooter was identified as a 17-year-old boy by the name of Austin Wyatt Rollins. He was 17. He was hit and later died at the hospital. A female and a male student ages 16 and 14 were also injured and wounded and at the hospital. The shooting, which played out against a rancorous national debate over arming teachers and putting more officers in the schools to prevent school shootings was notable because the authorities credited the St. Mary's County Deputy Blaine Gaskill with possibly saving the lives of many students by quickly engaging the shooter and shooting him. This is a tough guy who closed in quickly and took the right action. According to Maryland Governor Larry Hogan said of Gaskell, uh, the motive for the shooting remains under investigation, but St. Mary's County Sheriff Timothy Cameron said that detectives are exploring whether a prior relationship between Rollins and a female victim might have played a role in the motives. The shooting comes days before thousands are expected in Washington for Saturday's March for Our Lives rally, a march against gun violence and school shootings. It came about after a gunman took 17 innocent lives at a high school in Parkland, Florida. And Hogan said he would push emergency legislation to improve school safety in the wake of this latest incident today. It is exceptionally tragic day, said James Scott Smith, the superintendent of St. Mary's Schools. If you don't think this can happen at your school, you are sadly mistaken. We are shaken, but we are very strong here at St. Mary's. Now, Cameron said that Rollins pulled out a semi-automatic Glock handgun in the hallway as classes were getting underway at 7.55 a.m. this morning at the school of 1,600 students. Rollins shot the female victim first, sending students and staff scrambling for cover. Cameron said they quickly notified Gaskill, who is the only school officer armed stationed in Great Mills. He was assigned there back in August. Gaskell is also a member of the local SWAT team, and he joined the sheriff's office six years ago. So they had an armed security officer in the school, which is what I've been begging for. I really don't, I'm not, I would rather have armed officers who are well-trained than even teachers with guns because, you know, teachers with guns, even if they're trained, I want them teaching students, not worried about security. I want the security officers, which are police officers, to have, that's all that's on their mind is security, not petty little things that the kids are doing. Security of the facility. And so here at, here at this school right here in Maryland at St. Mary's, they had a man in place and he saved no doubt a lot of lives. Now, Gasco followed Rollins down the hallway before each fired at nearly the same moment. Rollins may have shot himself or Gasco's bullet may have hit him, but the whole incident lasted less than a minute. When he saw Gasco with the gun, he decided then he was taking his own life. Authorities initially said Rollins shot the male victim after shooting the female victim, but later said they needed to investigate further before determining who got shot first. But authorities are reviewing video footage from the school to get a better sense of how this incident unfolded. Still, Cameron said there was no question. The situation would have been worse if the officer had not confronted the shooter. And what if the officer in Parkland, Florida had went in and confronted the shooter? Could that have been a lot better than what it turned out? Well, uh, MedStar St. Mary's Hospital said in a statement that the 14-year-old boy was in good condition 
with a thigh injury where he was shot, and the 16-year-old girl was stabilized and transferred to the University of Maryland Prince George Hospital Center, where she remains in critical condition. Cameron said authorities had not received any warnings about Rollins before the shooting, but were searching his home, his electronic devices, and more in search of clues to what prompted the shooting. And after the shooting, Tinnaker said he ran away from the closed classroom door. He and about 20 other students waited in the back room area for about 10 minutes until a police officer knocked and told the students they could come out. You could look over and still see the blood on the ground. The school was placed on lockdown as the situation unfolded and the parents were warned to stay away. News video from the scene showed police cruisers with lights and warnings outside of the school while other vehicles could be heard racing toward the school. And Isaiah Quarles, a 10th grader, was walking to his first period class this morning. He didn't hear a gunshot, but he saw a girl falling to the ground. He said later he thought she had fainted, but said he then heard screams and shouts and someone yelling about a gun. Everyone started running. I started running too. I was scared. Folks, and the story goes on and on with more firsthand accounts from these kids in Maryland today. It could have been a whole lot worse, folks. It could have been a massacre. Um, I just hope that some of the liberals, some of these that are fighting against uh, uh, trying to take away the Second Amendment rights of the American citizens, I wish they would get a clue that you have to have people, look, in position. We have to have folks in position to defend the children. I mean, why aren't we defending the children? We, we, we have no problem putting three, two and three armed officers on a Brinks truck to guard the money. We have no problem with one or two armed security guards at every bank, but we don't have any security for the children. Does that make sense? So, um, uh, anyway, I just uh, our prayers are going out right now for the families uh, there in Maryland in this latest shooting. But wait, we've got more. Now we have a sixth bomb has gone off in Austin, Texas. Number five went off this morning at a FedEx facility, but number six just went off a little over an hour and a half ago in Austin, Texas. Another man has been critically wounded. At a Goodwill store, a package was left there at the Goodwill store. When the, when, and when the man picked it up and went to open it, it exploded. It was a bomb. This is insane, uh, what's going on here. Um, I'm sorry, I can't take it down. I have to go all the way in there. Okay, but I'll just show you the can. Okay, there's the can. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I uh, want to really thank Erica and Michael for the, uh, giving us this while we were in Oceanside. Yes, this is the, um, this is the heavenly roasted coffee that's coming soon. Uh, we'll have that soon for you, okay? We'll have that soon for you. Uh, let me tell you what else is going on here real fast now. Let's take a peek at what's taking place here in Austin, Texas. Here's the story. Another bomb, number six, has just gone off uh, in what looks like a serial bomber. Um, law enforcement officials say there's no reason to believe an incident involving an incendiary device in Austin, Texas this evening is related to the series of recent bombings. A string of explosions in Austin, which have left two people dead and others injured have the city on edge and sparked hundreds of law enforcement to descend on the area. Earlier this morning, a package detonated in the FedEx facility near San Antonio, injuring one person. The package was addressed to be shipped to Austin, Texas. But reports of a package explosion at a Goodwill store tonight initially sparked a major panic, but police later said the incident involved an incinerary device and was not thought to be maybe connected to the so-called 
serial bomber, but I'm not so sure about that. A male was is seriously injured, was taken for treatment this evening, but they are not life threatening. An unexploded package bomb was discovered earlier at FedEx facility in Austin, Texas. Two sources briefed on the investigation told ABC News the sixth device connected to serial bomber. Among the devices are five package bombs and one tripwire bomb. And the uh, uh, this is really serious, folks. Uh, we've got a problem. We've got a serial bomber loose in Austin, Texas, and and the police don't know. I mean, trying to figure this mo out is really tough leaving packages at people's doorsteps at their homes and then sending packages through the mail and then dropping them off at uh, retail locations and just where else will he go next? And uh, what is the motivation? Why is this happening? And uh, we've just, this is very, very, very disturbing, folks, to be quite honest with you. Very disturbing and uh, it's got Austin, Texas on edge. No question about it. Austin, Texas is on edge. And rightfully so. We have a serial bomber loose in the land. And we need to pray like never before because we've, we, you know, we're again, we're in uncharted territory, to be quite honest with you. Uh, this uh, is strange. Very strange and very disturbing, but it is taking place, and uh, we'll continue to pray. We'll con and I just need the prayer warriors. We need to catch this guy, okay? And here's what I keep getting. Police might not be the ones that actually catch him. It's probably going to take a just an everyday civilian, a citizen, who's going to see something that don't look right, going to watch somebody with a package, set it somewhere that don't make sense. It's going to be something random like that. Just, and it's because I believe God is going to intervene because of the prayer warriors. And I want all of our prayer warriors to, to really intercede. We've got to get this guy. We, no more bombs need to go off. We really need to get him now. If there's any way we can. And, and we are asking God to help us. We're praying. This needs to happen uh, in this situation. Because we certainly are living in the last days, guys. And uh, the violence is going to continue. We don't need this kind of violence, uh, you know, unexplained violence. We really, really don't. Um, and uh, hang on one second. We might have something else happening here. All right, here we go. We have a report. President Trump did meet with the Saudi crown prince uh, today at the White House. The Saudi crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, kicked off his U.S. visit with talks and a lunch at the White House, where President Trump displayed posters showing the recent Saudi weapons purchases from the United States, saying, we make the best equipment in the world. The $12.5 billion Saudis were paying for the planes, the tanks, the ships, and the munitions shown on the posters was just peanuts for the oil-rich kingdom. Trump joked before cameras at the Oval Office. You should have increased it, he told Mohammed. The poster's list of finalized sales fell far short of the $110 billion that Trump was first told when he visited uh, Saudi Arabia last May, but $12.5 billion was still a very significant purchase. And so um, that's kind of what went on in this meeting. I'm sure there was a lot more to the meeting than that. They were going to talk about the threat of Iran. I'm sure that was discussed but they're not wanting to share that with the general public right now. They're keeping that, uh, really keeping that to because they are concerned. I'm sure there's no doubt. They don't want to tip their hand. What is it that they've got 
in mind when it comes to dealing with radical is Islam, uh, Shiite Muslims out of uh, Iran. The, uh, I, you know, the Saudi prince, the Saudi crown prince Mohammed bin Salman called the Iranian supreme leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, the new Hitler of the Middle East because of his ideology to destroy Israel, to blow up Jerusalem, and to blow up Mecca in Saudi Arabia. So we got a lot going on here because when you're talking about blowing up Mecca, so Avi Lipkin is probably right that there is a war looming between Saudi Arabia and Iran. And meanwhile, tensions on the sea between the United States and Russia, just off the coast of the Mediterranean Sea there, just off the coast of Syria within, within shooting distance now of Damascus, has everyone on edge, especially when Trump has hinted that he might just do it because of what he perceives chemical weapons and warfare used by Assad, or at least Assad's being accused of it. Now, Assad says he didn't do it, that this is a false flag, that this is a, a uh, free Syrian army is doing this, trying to blame him. Um, but the, uh, according to the Pentagon, all of their intel and all of their sources are saying, oh no, it's not, it is Assad. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on this because I really believe this is the most dangerous situation we got. But don't forget our little dictator down there in North Korea, Kim Jong-un, who wants to go boom, 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 boom. He's been quiet, he's been nice, he's been gentle, he's been easy, at least as far as we can see, not counting all the people he's butchering and beating and uh, torturing uh, in the prison prison camps of North Korea. We're never going to really know what that's about unless we go in there and take that regime down. But President Donald Trump is going to go and meet with Kim Jong-un. They may be going to meet in the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. They might meet even in another country like Switzerland or Sweden. But I look for it to be in that neutral zone. And I think that Trump is going to put some kind of a deal together now. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's going to require a lot of money from the United States. But Trump is already hinting that no, 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 no. U.S. will pay some of it, but no, no, no. South Korea and Japan are going to help pick up the tab because they have the most to lose. And Trump will probably even get a little bit out of the, the Vietnamese, maybe a little bit out of even uh, the Philippines. He might even want a little bit out of China while he's at it. So we'll see how that works out. But certainly this is a, uh, a, a, a our latest development here uh, is that uh, Trump and so Trump's dealing, and that's going to happen in May, I guess, it's, or it isn't set. There's no date set, but they're talking early May. Now, there's also a possibility Trump's going to go to Jerusalem and um, be there for the opening uh, of the new embassy in Jerusalem on May 14th. So is it possible he's going to sign up some kind of a truce, some kind of a uh, a deal with North Korea that they lay down their nuclear arms and there's peace at Korea and then turn around and establish the United States Embassy in Jerusalem all in the same month? Are you serious? Can he subdue nations? Which is what Isaiah 45 says that number 45 can do? Does he have the anointing of King Cyrus on him? Will he subdue nations? And what about Jared Kirshner? He's still working the, the covenant with many. Uh, he did last week at the White House when he met with representatives from all so many, lots of Muslim nations as well as European Union, European nations. Maybe the Vatican was even there. We don't know. But uh, wow, we know that the Israelis were there. And this was historical, really. But you notice how quiet it's been? 
Nobody's talking about that meeting. That's huge. This was a huge deal, folks, going on right in the White House in Washington, D.C., and yet nobody is discussing what went on in that summit. Unbelievable. But uh, you know it is definitely tied to biblical prophecy. But we're going to keep a close eye on that. I mean, all these things are, and what about that heavenly palace? The Hopi Indians say the last sign of the end times in their prophecy, it's called the ninth sign, when you see a heavenly dwelling place come crashing to the earth, then know that the ceremony of our people is ended. It's the end of days. That's what the Hopi Indian prophecy is. Well, now you've got a Chinese space station called the Heavenly Palace, Heavenly Dwelling Place, going to come crashing to the earth. Are you serious? Are you serious? No, 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 no. I don't believe it's the end of days at all. Bible prophecy is what we follow. We know that the biblical scriptures are true. But it is ironic. It is weird even that a... a, a a prophecy, an old, old prophecy of so many years ago could talk about something that's this extraordinary. I, you know, I'm going to, and what if it hits Rome? What if it hits the Vatican? Now that's crazy. That's crazy. But, but, but right now Rome is the number one location for the heavenly palace to come crashing down. Uh, we're going to, I doubt very seriously it hits Rome, but Again, uh, it's crazy what's going on in these last days. Um, you want to be watching closely to what takes place now in the Middle East. There's also some more information that's happening. I want to check it real quick here. Give me just one second because um, I was waiting to see what the if there was an update on this or not. So I'm going to, I'm going to double check right now. Yes, Austin, Texas is on edge as that box explodes at Goodwill. Um, uh, hang on. Nor'easter, yes. Um, oh, fa that's what I want to give you an update on Facebook. Are you serious? So the okay, so from what I understand, the media, the, the 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 mainstream, lamestream, fake news media was trying to use this Facebook scandal against the Trump administration. But now we're finding out the Trump administration had nothing to do with this. But the but the Clinton administration was involved, along with President Obama and Zuckerberg and others, in this mining or profiling of all of these Facebook. Uh, followers, and then Facebook was selling everybody's information to different advertising agencies, making unbelievable, huge, unbelievable, huge amounts of money off of your information. And now this may, there may be a change made in the laws to prevent Facebook from doing this and say Facebook will have to buy your information from you to sell it to someone else. The guy that, the, that gave, come up with his own algorithm that he gave Steve Bannon to figure out who were the likely voters for Trump, he did not, he did not do this on behalf of Facebook. He just went to Facebook and figured it out on his own. He's some 28-year-old kid up in Canada. Then, after he gathered the information, making his own software to pull it off Facebook, he sold it to Steve Bannon for six, or, or not Steve Bannon, but to uh, those that were, uh, Bannon got his hands on it. He sold it for $6 million. That wasn't illegal. That was his work, figuring out a way to create a software to pull information about people that were already freely on the, the Facebook. That was not Facebook selling to the Trump campaign. Facebook was selling to advertisers and to the Democratic Party. So now the, now the Democrats who thought they had, uh, had somehow uh, locked down uh, Zuckerberg with Trump 
are finding out, no, they've got the wrong team again. So remember when we talked about the Russian collusion confusion? Everybody said it was Trump colluding with the Russians. No, we're finding out it was the DNC. It was the, the, the Democratic National Committee. It was Debbie Wasserman Schultz. It was Hillary Rodham Clinton spending $6 million a piece to buy a fake dossier and other documentations. The Russian collusion confusion illusion was the was the Clinton administration, the Clinton uh, cartel and uh, and the Democratic Party. And so once again, what they are really doing, they keep blaming on Trump. But now that which is done in secret is starting to be shouted from the housetop. It's starting, it's the house of cards. It's starting to fall and it's falling fast. And now I don't know what Zuckerberg's going to do. I don't know what Facebook's going to do. And I don't know what the full ramifications of this is going to be. But uh, his stock is crashing. It's falling. You know, and at four o'clock, I did an interview with uh, Bob Kudla. Uh, on Facebook falling. And he had some great inside information on all of this. And he broke down what it is Facebook has been doing and how that this is, well, the, the United Kingdom and several countries are furious at Facebook. The, the Washington, D.C. was going to be furious, thinking that Zuckerberg was in collusion with Trump, but only to find out, no, he wasn't. The information that he was mining was being sold to, to groups that supported the Democratic Party. So you got a whole different story than what originally started to come out of the mainstream, lamestream, fake news media. And once again, once again, uh, the Clinton cartel is, is involved again, and in in, in, in Obama and Loretta Lynch and everybody involved. We're beginning to watch this house of cards crumble. Comey, I mean, it's James Comey, my homie, me, you mo. Listen, listen, guys, there's just too much going on right now. I just, I can't deal with the corruption. I can't deal. But one thing that uh, uh, Bob Kudla said today was there's six major companies that are too big to fail. These are not banks. These, these six companies, the amount of cash that flows through these six businesses is so huge that you can't let them crash or the whole U.S. stock market would crash. Let me tell you what those six companies are. They are Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. Those six companies are so huge with so much cash flowing, so much money involved, that if all six of those were to crash, it would take the whole stock market down. This is, these six are very similar to the six big banks that are too big to fail. And so with Facebook in this jam right here, they can't, let Zuckerberg tumble too far. They can't let two or three of these guys start to fall together. So according to Kudla, there would have to be some kind of adjustment made because the market is too huge. You know how many people have their 401k, their retirement pensions are, are locked in the stock market and a lot of the stock that many of you working right now, some of you watching me right now, if you were to go check your 401k, you would find out that part of your retirement fund is invested in these six companies. And maybe as much as half of your retirement fund is in those six companies. And the other half is in everything else combined. It's very possible that you, so, so with that in mind, you can't let these six crash because they're not the only ones that crash. It would be multiple millions of Americans retirement funds or 401ks or IRAs. Having said that, that's why you will see the brakes start to be put on. Uh, Zuckerberg has lost about, about 10% of his 
you in the last two days, that is an enormous amount of money. And that also affects other companies that are uh, working close with them. So uh, we're going to wait and see what's going to go on. Uh, Zuckerberg may have known this was coming. He had already been selling some of his stock off. And not only him, but some of his other uh, top people had been selling some of their stock pretty aggressively. You can't, you know, you, you, there's a limitation on how much of percentage of stock you can sell if you're uh, one of the main shareholders. You can only sell so much of your stock per year because if you sold everything, people would, you know, freak out and uh, people would see there must be something bad coming. But you can notice, and you'll see this, folks, a lot of times uh, with bankers or other major corporations, we've seen these types of moves take place. So what I'm saying is, in these last days, you're going to see all kinds of things happening. And don't forget your four horsemen of the apocalypse. Don't forget them. First, it's that white horse. It's that spirit of the Antichrist that goes around conquering and getting in position. You have a red horse of war that will bring pe take peace from the earth and bring terror. Then the black horse of the economy will begin to cause prices to destabilize and governments to collapse. And then the pale horse, the horse that brings death by plague, by famine, by disease. Some of it, I believe, geo engineered, I believe, bioweapon, biodepopulization. It's the pale horse, okay, that brings death. Don't forget, these four horsemen of the apocalypse have to gallop. They do have to gallop. Are you saved? I wouldn't want to be living in a world that's crumbling, chaos, and confusion all around. I'm going to ask you a question. And I really am serious. You say, well, then, Pastor, how in the world do I prepare for such a time? Well, first of all, you got to get your soul right with God. That's just, you got to get things right with God. You got to start right there. I mean, until you get saved, really, all the rest of it doesn't matter because you're in a jam. And, matter of fact, the world is going to get ugly, folks. It's not going to get. The whole world's not going to just all of a sudden get peachy cream. I mean, we're, we're dealing with real world situations. Now, individuals will be blessed and, and, and the remnant church God's going to take care of. And there's a, Israel's going to have the hand of God's protection. But there's a lot of stuff going to go on that uh, will eventually bring about the apocalypse. So uh, what you need to do is ask yourself, what are you going to do? How are you going to prepare? What's going to be your plan? Start with this. Who do you believe in? Is it yourself? You're going to go to Mars with uh, Elon Musk? You can run, but you can't hide, folks. You're going to go underground? You're going to be part of the underground city somehow? Are you part of the global elitists? Are you a member of a secret society? Or are you just like me and everyone else? You're just living in a world filled with corruption on every side? I'm not moved, though, by the corruption. I'm not, I'm not, this is not, a, no. No, no, no. I live in the kingdom blessing. I live in God's anointing. I, I'm protected by the blood of Jesus. I'm, I'm walking in his grace and mercy. No. And when he's ready to come and get me, I'm ready to go. And everybody that, listen, folks, you don't want to be here when the wrath of God is poured out. The Lord has not appointed you under wrath. God is going to come for his redeemed. There's a time, I don't know the day, I don't know the hour, but I can see the day approaching. It's going to get ugly out here. It's going to get a lot worse out there. And, and there's going to be some ebb and flow in all of that. You're going to hear of all kinds of apocalyptic events. But Jesus is coming. This I can promise you. He is coming back. And he's coming to get the bride. He's coming to get the redeemed. He's coming to get those that have been washed in the blood. Are you saved? I'm going to ask you to do something right now. I'm going to get a song. I'm going to get a song. I'm going to get a song. It's time to call on the name of the Lord. It's time to get set free from the bondage of sin. It's time to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. 
It's time to, been, to go to life's flowing fountain and find out what the living water is truly all about, folks. It's time to be born again. It's time to be set free. And whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed, folks. You don't have to die lost. You don't have to die without Jesus. You don't have to be left behind. You can find the Lord as your Savior and be born again. I'll write your name down. Just type, I want to be saved. They can take his name off the news. They can take his name out of prayer. But if they want to get to God. The moderators will write your name down. There's only one way there. That's through Jesus. Yes, the Lord's the only way. Through and back. Are you ready? Be your own God. Let me tell you. No, that ain't so. It's Jesus. Yes, the Lord's the only way. Good and bad, Jesus. Calabasso wants to be saved. Calabasso. How many others want to be saved? He is the way. He's the truth and the life. N.L. Johnson. He is the door. This world needs to step through now. N.L. Johnson wants to be saved. Dolores Cena. And your work on earth is done And you're lying on your deathbed Where will you run? It'll be to Jesus Are you ready? Yes, the love's the only way Through and by Call upon the name of Jesus Christ Let's get born again Let's get saved there are people on the fence tonight. Are you on the fence? It's time to get saved. It's time to get they set free. Name off the news. And they can take his name out of prayer. But if they want to be heard by God, there's only one way there, Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, yes, the, Lord, the, only way. the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Larry Holland is rededicating. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Don't wait too late, folks. Don't wait too late. Jesus is coming soon. He's the only way to go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Rich Cope wants to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Are you ready? Show me where my feet should tread. Lead and guide me. While Kevin sings this song, you just type, I want to be saved. Let me 
turn this life around, dear Lord. I'm all. Ken Kirchner wants to be saved. Let it burn brighter than before. One lot of passion within my heart, Lord. I want to be like you, Lord. Be like you, Lord. I'm all yours. I'm all yours. My steps and make them clear, dear Lord. Diana and Lonnie are rededicating. Earthquake awareness is rededicating. Lay the sin down. Help me turn this wrong around, dear Lord. I'm all yours. Light a fire, fire down within me. Gina Harris wants to be saved. Folks, uh, we just praise God for Cabas, uh, Calabasso and N.L. Johnson and Dolores... Cena and Rich Cope and Ken Kirchner and Gina Harris all wanting to be saved. Plus, a lot of folks are also rededicating here tonight. Uh, these six want to be saved. And I, and I believe there's others. There's another one. Dave from Pennsylvania also now wanting to be saved. You know what? Can I just take about two more minutes and just say to every one of you, for by... Listen, for by grace are you saved through faith. Listen, we've all sinned. Let's get real with this. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, not one. And so if you will call upon the name of Jesus, if you believe in your heart, he's the son of God. And if you want to turn your life around, if you want to make sure your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, why don't you do this? Give your life to Christ. Cabasso's real name is Jose Torres. We're going to pray right now with every person that wants to be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm being serious with God. I'm repenting of my sins. And I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life and to set me free. I'm asking him to deliver me, to break, break, break every chain that Satan is trying to bind my soul. I rebuke the devil. I, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke him and I turn my life to Christ. I'm opening my door of my heart to Jesus Christ to come inside me. Yeshua, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and set me free because I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe. 